Hey guys, welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be taking you through the creation of this city scene with this alien ship kind of looming above. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I did is start with a simple sketch. I didn't want to go too detailed because cities can take a while to draw. And then I'm just taking some base color and laying it down because this isn't a very complicated scene color-wise. I can sort of lay out all my base colors to help me get a good start just going over the areas that I think that these colors will be dominant. Cities usually have this nice orange glow. And I want to contrast it against this bright blue light from the alien ship. I'm starting with the foreground here, just doing the wall. And I sampled off those colors that I originally placed down, which just gives me this nice, easy base to go off of. And you also notice that I added an edge to the wall. That's something to think about if you're doing an interior. Walls usually aren't flat, especially if they're connected to a window. Then on the left I added a set of blinds just to add some interest to the left side. And in this scene I imagine these two figures standing here looking at the ceiling craft through their window and the blinds were a good way to show that. Now I'm coming in, I'm setting up the horizon line because in a city scene your perspective is going to be very very important. I started out going for a two-point perspective for this but I decided after I set it up that's not the look I wanted for the scene. So instead I did a one point perspective. And you notice there that I created that vanishing point very quickly. And all you do to create that is you take the line tool and you drag it from your vanishing point to the farthest point away. Then you do Control Alt T to set up your first step and you drag it and rotate it from your vanishing point to as far as you want it to go and then you do Control Shift Alt T and it'll do a step and repeat and just keep duplicating that line until you go all the way around in the circle. Next I'm coming to my clouds. I'm using the brush that I use for most of my clouds. This works a little bit differently from the normal clouds I paint because all the light is on the bottom since it's nighttime and there's a very bright light source emanating from right below them, I kind of had to figure out how the light would be hitting these clouds. So I just added some strong blue hits to the bottoms. Now I'm just trying to design the alien ship. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with this. In the sketch it was just something, I, I wanted a bright light source hanging down, but I wasn't sure about the rest of the ship. And you can see it kind of evolve as I go. Sometimes when you start painting and filling in something, as you do that it'll suddenly kind of pop into your mind what you want to do with it. So just exploring with painting can help you go in the right direction if you aren't sure how something should look. So I'm starting it. I have this claw thing hanging down with the light in it. And I'm just trying to get these claws kind of set up properly. And as I paint, I'm going back over with the eraser tool to clean up the edges because on structures you do want to watch out for your edges. You know, when you're painting a landscape, a loose brush stroke isn't a very big deal but on structures it becomes much more noticeable if it doesn't fit with the rest of what you're working on. And then to kind of get the claw on the right side exactly how I wanted it, I just duplicated it from the left and moved it over. And because of how it sits on the vanishing point, I can kind of get away with just having it set up that way.
And what I'm doing next is coming in with a lasso tool and just kind of cutting out some interesting shapes. Now this thing I'm using is called No Light Factory. Um, you do pay for it, but it is pretty nice for creating lens flares. Gives you all these options to add little beams of light or whatever you need. And just taking a little time in there, you can create some interesting lens flares that will help you out. I wasn't happy with how short the beams were on initial lens flares, so I did go back in really quick and extend it out. And for these figures, I'm just very quickly going in with a just about black brush. I'm sampling off the dark blue and then darkening it down almost completely. Just quickly going over the frames for the figures that I did. I don't have to worry about too much about getting the proper shapes because it is going to be basically black. And you'll see now that the lens flare has been adjusted. I felt the edges of the beams were too bright, so I went in with a layer mask and just slightly dimmed them. And for the figures, I'm just painting in some hair. I don't want these just round shapes up top. I, I do want there to be visible strands kind of hanging out. It just helps sell the idea that these people have, you know, hair and clothing and whatever else. And I thought about adding some plants to the foreground and then blurring them out as if they were too close to the camera to be in focus. But I just, they didn't really work, so I got rid of them. And for painting the energy itself, I just took a nice bright tealish color and started going over and then creating little streaks coming out, just little visual interest so it's not just pure blue ball. Just looked really weird with the hand where it was, so I moved it out a little bit. So now it looks like her hand is kind of moving out to the side and on forward onto the glass. Next I'm pulling up some references of cities because I wasn't quite sure of the look I wanted to go for the city. I wasn't sure how big the other buildings I wanted to be and the view you would be looking at. And plus because I haven't really done much painting of cities at night, it's good to get a good ground for where to start. I'm coming in again and I'm using a layer on Color Dodge and just very lightly painting in the center of the light. Then taking a layer at soft light and going over it and just adding this nice blue glow emanating out from the center point. And you'll notice again where I painted all those initial colors, the the blue fits right in with what I originally did. And you can do that if you have a really good idea of what you want to do with a piece. Then for the roads here, I just drew a couple straight lines and then dragged them out into perspective using the transform tool. And for a lot of buildings, I'm using shift to paint straight lines or the polygonal lasso tool to draw straight edges. I'm just quickly trying to shape out some different buildings. For this city I wanted it to be more of a modern city like you would see nowadays. So if you were in say Chicago or something, 
you would see a city more like this. And for the city lights, I just took a round brush and added some scattering and spacing to it. Now I'm taking some real city lights. And how I extracted, extracted them is I basically went into the channels, found the channel with the best contrast, duplicated that, and then added a curves adjustment or levels, depending. And then you can control click on that channels and it'll select the highlights for you. And then you go out to your layer and you press control J and it'll duplicate what's selected. So I can just take the city lights and move them in here. A lot of them will be hidden, but it's more for the, the distance. I didn't really want to paint a lot back there. So sometimes using real photographs in your painting can just really speed things along and help give you a look that might take you a while to paint in. And again, I'm just quickly painting in some buildings. And as I paint these buildings, I put them on separate layers. So I have my foreground buildings on a layer, and then I'll have the mid-ground buildings, and then the far buildings. And this helps you kind of, when you go into detail them, it makes it easier just doing that. So you don't have to worry about painting over what you did in the foreground. You don't have to worry about painting over the mid-ground and so on. So staggering things like this can help you out. So just think of it as far, mid, and foreground. I came in with the lasso tool to clean up the edges because a lot of the buildings I did just paint in without using any hard edges. When you paint urban settings, having strong edges is generally pretty important. Because if you look at a building, it's not going to have this really wonky edges. When you look at a building, you expect it to have this nice straight edge. Going into the horizon line, just adding some orange glow coming off the city. As big cities, you'll notice that they do give off this a lot of light. And buildings generally have little things sitting on top, so you can help sell the idea that you have buildings here by adding those little antennas and little things that sit on top of them. Coming back into the clouds, adding some dark blue because it felt too washed out. Just cleaning up some more of the edges. Coming back to the clouds here, they just didn't look the way I wanted to yet. So coming back in with some other bright hits to help show that there is a very bright light source here, as well as some dark areas to show how the clouds kind of form into each other. And when I was imagining this, I imagined the alien ship kind of coming down through the clouds and just kind of parting them as it came through so it became thinner as it got towards the source. So adding some slightly brighter clouds to the sides. I wanted to taper off how bright the light was. Next I'm coming in and adding a curves adjustment and just kind of creating this effect around the edges, especially in the foreground. And it just helps show that this is the, the source, a bright source of light. And by darkening the areas around it, it just helps bring it out. Setting some little things of light in the foreground. Just to show that there might be a building here or something else, just a bright light source, but you can't exactly see what it is. 
And now I've begun detailing the buildings. And this is going to be a lot of repetition in this piece. And how I basically do this is I take the stock photo there and cut out the lights that I want using the marquee tool. And then what you do is you bring them in and you set them to color dodge. And all this does is basically make it so that the lights stand out but the rest of the building doesn't. And this is a great way to extract bright light sources from darker backgrounds. And I went in and I highlighted some of the windows against the building there to show that they are picking up some of the light from the alien craft. And coming in, doing the same technique, lining it up with my perspective using distort, setting it to color judge, and adjusting the curves. If I want to change the lightness, I can use hue saturation. And you bring that up with control U. And you can either colorize it to adjust it all towards one color or just adjust it manually. And then to help add some detail to the building, you can just come in and basically holding shift, you just go straight down on the building. Go add in some structure elements. I took the top of that building and I moved it in. And with all these pieces, I'm clipping them into the building layers. This is also why I suggested using separate areas. So you foreground, you can clip all the foreground lights into these buildings and then move them back as you go into make ground. I'm coming in here, adding another light to the right side. It's a very quick process to do this, but it's also a tedious one and it'll be time consuming to do this to a, most of the city. And I had a couple lights coming up from the from the ground level. And you'll notice a lot of times I, I do use the same building lights, but by adjusting their colors and Sometimes going over with the eraser tool and uh, removing some of the lights, you can make the illusion that these are separate lights. You can't really tell that I repeated them. Again, just creating some structural elements. Coming back to the foreground figures, just fixing them up a little bit. The one on the left was a little too tall with the head. So I just shortened it slightly. I'm coming in and I'm taking the city light brush and just trying to add some ground lights. And then for another brush I'm taking basically a people brush and just making it very small and painting in a bunch of little lights on the street level there. And what this does is basically helps show that maybe this is an area where there's a lot of screens or something else. And because the brush is so small, you can't even tell that it was people. So using a non-standard brush sometimes, in a way you might not think of, can create some unusual effects that can help you. What I'm doing now is taking a square brush and just trying to play around with the settings for this to create some nice building lights. And what I did is basically set it so that the brightness has a, a large amount of jit jitter to it in the color dynamics. And that can help sell that there's variations of light here. And then when I set it to color dodge, it basically creates the same illusion as the real photographs that I used. Notice that how important the perspective grid for this is. 
you, you definitely want to keep an eye out for that as you work in any kind of urban setting. It's just a lot of repetition. Just basically placing the lights and then get your perspective grid and then use the store to adjust the corners. And a lot of times you'll notice that the lights look a little too far stretched when you do them on the sides. So if you switch it to scale then and then just drag it in, it'll help fix that effect. And just duplicating these. And by rotating them and adjusting them, I can just help break up the fact that they're repeating. Erasing some of them. And although they, it was obvious that they repeated when they were sitting on top of there, just uh, three of them together. When I actually put it down on the building, you can't really tell anymore. And for this building brush, I basically took four dots and saved it as a brush. This is great, a great detailing tool for buildings. Rotating my canvas so I can draw what I need to easier. And I'm just painting in some blue from the alien ship. I'm trying to keep in mind that there is a very bright light source above the city. So I want the buildings to pick up some of that. I'm using a quick mask to select areas of buildings. And you bring up the quick mask with Q and make a selection. You press Q again, and then you probably have to invert it. And what I did on that building is I, I made the, the bottom of it more orange, picking up the street lights. And then as it got towards the top, I made it darker and then more blue to pick up the light source. And you notice there how I was talking about how it looks stretched out when you add the distort to it, and then bringing it in with the scale. And you can quickly change your transforms by right clicking on it and it'll bring up that menu with all your transform options. Just drawing in some structural elements. I wasn't too happy with what I did initially so I went back over. The nice thing about buildings at night is it's kind of easy to add in detail because there isn't going to be a whole lot of it. Buildings generally have a single look to them. There isn't going to be a lot of variation in their surface. More at ground level because you have the entrance down there, but for the most part the sides of the buildings are going to be a single design. I'm adding in a, a top section to this building. Again, just keeping in mind my perspective grid. And the top of the building felt a little bit weird because it did sit right on the horizon line. I'm going in and just painting in some bright lights from the lights coming in underneath it to help add some interest to it. around with things a little bit. Sometimes it helps to just sit back for a moment and look at your piece. Just see what needs done. Again, you know, I'm trying to play around with lights to add some interest in front of those mid buildings. Because if you do look at a, an image of a city at night, you'll have a lot of lights that you see sticking in front of buildings, but you might not necessarily be able to 
recognize that building other than its lights, but you know it's there. So the bigger buildings might stand out more, but you'll have buildings you can't see in front of them. You'll notice I created a couple screens on the buildings, just using very bright reds, greens, and blues. Because in a big city, this is going to be something that's all over the place. There's going to be billboards, advertisements. You know, if you've ever been in New York City, you know that they're everywhere. You know, there's a lot of lights and banners and marquees and just there's a lot of interest that you can add without necessarily painting in painstaking details which is work using that brush to create all those little lights in the street level comes in here I just I wanted this to be more of a glass building so I, I started in and I painted in more of the blues from the alien ship so we'll be picking up quite a bit of those and then picking up quite a bit of orange from street level I was trying to figure out what to do with the lights here so I, I decided to have some lights at that top edge kind of streaming down onto the building because a lot of big buildings at night they have these little lights that help illuminate the structure you know, it's more of an architectural thing to just help illuminate the building at night. Again, going in with the brush and painting in some lights. You know, I, I wanted this city to be in nighttime, but I wanted it to be very busy. So it's not quite the midnight or anything, it's a busy time. Going over to that other tall building, and I'm adding some blue to it. Since the taller buildings are going to be a lot closer to the light, and just having them pick up that blue helps let the viewer know that there is a bright light. Into the street here, and painting in more of a grayish tone to it. Because it was a little too orange for me, and I'm going to go over it later with a actual orange glow. Since cars in street scenes do give off a lot of glow, especially busy streets, most of the time when you look at uh, city photography, because it does have a longer exposure, the cars tend to look like they're blurring. And they just give off a lot of orange and red light. Because this scene is viewed from a high angle, I can kind of get away with not really painting any cars. I can just draw little lights for representation of the cars. Add some blue tone to those four buildings. Notice that as I slowly detailed buildings, even though I didn't really do anything new, you know, I'm still using the same steps I used on the initial buildings. It's it's really starting to help sell the, the city scene now. Just adding some more lights to the buildings. Working on the make round buildings here, just duplicating that light, flipping it, rotating it and putting it in perspective and I'm adjusting the hue you can bring that up with control U and then going in with the eraser you can see instantly the repetitiveness of just duplicating that is gone it just lets you get away in cities with reusing a lot of elements
in and I'm adding some glows to brighter areas. So that area I painted near the bottom of the building there, since that would be a bright source of light, I wanted to represent that. It helps sell the effect that there is a ton of lights there. And I also went in with a layer set to soft light, and I hit in with this nice orange color over the streets. And just duplicating those lights. And then erasing several areas of them to break up the repetitiveness. Adding some of those street level lights over there. Even though you can't see the street there, I wanted it to be so another busy street. So you have this one city block and then another one. Maybe they're both really busy streets. A look at things. And I'm coming in and adding some bright lights coming off the top of the building there. So, uh, these spotlights coming up. Using the line tool to create a marquee and painting them with these reds and blues and almost pure whites to create illusion on screen. Then going to that screen layer and painting over top of it. Just selecting some lights and going into those four buildings now. Making it with the perspective. Adjusting the hue and curves. Just adding in some other little bright lights to the street level. Because of the way the buildings are sitting, and a lot of times when you do look at city scenes, this, a lot of the streets will be hidden, so you don't have to worry about too many of them. But by having a couple detailed streets, you can just show that there are other streets here. It just helps trick the viewer, even though you didn't really paint them. And that's just about going to do it for this tutorial. I hope this was helpful for you. Like, favorite, subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.